Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace and in this episode I want to show you some new features of Photoshop that take some complicated tasks and have simplified them where in some instances you can do these things with a single click of a mouse. Specifically, I want to show you how you can use a new neural filter to do skin retouching and also how you can remove a subject from the background with a single click of a button. It is really awesome. And so so without further ado, let's hop over here into Photoshop. Now I have loaded up an image here of Nadia. She has fantastic skin, but if we zoom in at 100%, you can see that she has a few blemishes that we want to clean up. Now, normally with an image like this, we do maybe a frequency separation technique or do some uh, additional layers with masks and it could take a little bit of time to get this done. But now with neural filters, we can do pretty much all of those steps again with a single click of a button. So let's go back here to this image. Now, the first thing I want to do is I do want to retouch a little, uh, some of these blemishes just using a healing brush. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select my healing brush and then I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to retouch um, just using the proximity match healing brush a few of these little blemishes here. Nothing that's uh, too overly dramatic. I'm just going to be doing a couple of things here. Okay, that took, I don't know, 10 seconds. Now, here is the magic. What I want to do is I want to give her that uh, Instagram perfect skin. Normally, we'd have to do frequency separation to get something like that. It's a complicated process, but now we can use a new filter. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the very top, click on filter, and then neural filters. When we do that, this new panel opens up here. You have to have an active connect connection to the internet for these filters to work. It's using artificial intelligence on the Adobe servers to do all this really groovy stuff. So we're gonna go in here. We have a bunch of different filters here, super zoom, smart portrait, makeup transfer. These are uh, neural filters that are in the making. Some of them, some of them are, uh, haven't been released yet. These are coming out um, every few weeks as Adobe, the guys in the Adobe Labs have them finished. We're going to focus on this top one here, skin smoothing. So what I want to do is I want to correct all of this skin here. All I have to do is go up to skin smoothing. I'm going to click on that button right here and bam, that's it. I know it's crazy. So we can do some things here. Obviously we can make this a little bit more blurred out by dragging that over to the right. Um, it takes a couple seconds. There you go. I'm going to put that back about at where it starts at 50. We can give Nadia some of that crazy smooth mannequin skin by sliding the smoothness way over to the right. We can make that less smooth by dragging that to the left. But really, there's just two little controls here to worry about. And by default, it starts out at a really good place. Now we can go in here, this little button at the very bottom. You can click that to see the before and the after. It's a pretty dramatic change just with one click of a button. The other thing we can do is we can choose how to output this. So we can throw that to a new layer. I like to uh, add that to a, um, a duplicate layer masked and I'll hit OK. And then what that does for me is when I'm done, I have this layer down here, layer one, which is the changes that the neural filter made. Um, I can turn off the bottom layer and you can see that, but it's masked. And so I can just get a brush and I can brush in or brush out parts of that filter as I see fit. So it gives me full post-production control. It's really awesome. Again, one click skin smoothing, you can adjust those two sliders if you need to. Generally, you don't need to. And I've got a great result. Okay, let's go on to another really cool thing here. So I'm going to go to uh, this image right here. This is a picture of Karen. And what I want to do is I want to extract her from the background. Now, one of the things that traditionally is uh, a problem with this is hair. So we've got Karen's hair here, fine strands of hair, and I want to be able to see through that hair. So usually you would have to go in and do some kind of selective uh, color range or something to get that hair separated from the background. I don't want to learn how to do that. So instead, all I have to do is over here on the right hand side, there's this properties button. If you don't see that, you might not be in the photography workspace. Check that to see if you're there. And if you still don't see that, you might have to go to window and then you can go down here to properties and you click on that 
and then you'll see this properties dialog show up. Now make sure that you're not using a smart object. This won't work on smart objects and it won't work on locked layers. So make sure you're on a normal layer. So what I want to do here is I have this button remove background. I'm just going to click it. I'm going to wait for Photoshop to do its work. And look, there it is. Karen is removed from the background with one click. And we can just go in here and look. Even those fine strands of hair have been selected automatically. It's really crazy. Now on this selection, you'll notice that there is an issue here. So it didn't get everything exactly right. That's okay because it adds a mask. We can fine tune that. So I'm going to click on the mask. I'm going to grab my object selection tool. And I'm just going to see if I can select this part here that needs to be cut out. You can see it does that pretty good. And because this is a mask, I can just fill that with black. And there you go. We've got a little bit more here to clean up. Whoops. I made a mistake. Not on the mask. There we go. I'll paint that out. And now we've got this uh, Karen. She's cut out. And just to prove that, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to add a solid color. We'll put her on, I don't know, some light pinkish, something like that. I'll drag this below her. And there you go. You see Karen is selected and she's popped onto that background. Now what about a little bit more complicated image? And so we're going to go over here to Cami. Now this image is something that would take forever to cut out because look, not only do you have fine strands of hair, but some of those strands of hair are blurred. So we've got motion blur going on in this image. And so let's try that same thing on this image. You'll see that we might have to take one extra step. So again, I'm going to go click on my properties. I'm going to just click remove background. One click. Boom. Look at that. Okay. If I close this, you can see it did a very, very good job. Now you can also see that we've got some things that we need to clean up here toward the bottom. So it didn't select her exactly right. I can go in there with my brush and I can paint her back in here if I need to. I can adjust this stuff, um, you know, just like you normally would with a mask. So that gives you that kind of control. I'd have to clean up some other things here with her shirt. That's okay. We're concentrating on the hair. What I want to do is you can see there's still a little bit of gray mixed in with her hair. That might cause some issues if we try to blend her in a background. So I'm going to add again a solid color like we did before. And again, I'm going to choose this pinkish color here. I'm going to drag it below Cami. You can see now that we've got some artifacting showing up in her hair. I'd like Photoshop to automatically fix that for me. Good news. You can do that. So I'm going to click on the mask. The mask is what we want to work with. Again, I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to click on select and mask. So I'm going to click on that. And then way down here, you can see that there is this little button that says decontaminate colors. And so I'll zoom in there. Output setting decontaminate colors. So I want to decontaminate that pink from the gray that's coming through. I'm going to click on that. That's it. That's all I have to do. Just click on it. I'll say OK. And then now look at that. We have Cami with the blurred hair, all of her stuff selected on a pink background. Again, because this is a mask here, you can always go in there and do all your fine tuning, brushing in and brushing out areas that are problematic. But that's all there is to know. All those complicated tasks that used to take a long time, now you can do that with a click or two of a mouse and everything is looking great. Well, I hope this showed you some new features in Photoshop, and I hope that you learned a few things that will save you a lot of time. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV and click on the bell so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you again next time.